Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, this vehicle behind me is a 2008 RX400H Lexus, and the job today is to swap out the front brake pads and inspect the rotors. Uh, as you know, this is a hybrid vehicle, and there are some important um, issues with these hybrids that make repairs somewhat more complicated. I don't advertise myself as an expert in hybrid vehicles, but one thing that's critically important is to know that these orange wires are 600 volt wires. And not only that, but they carry a significant reserve to certainly take away a person's life or cause major problems. Stay off the orange wires. Now what happens if you come across a roadside accident and it's a hybrid and there are these orange wires sticking all over the place, what do you do? Well, most of these vehicles will have a service plug and that's it right there and uh, you put heavily insulated gloves on <clears throat> and then pull that plug out and by pulling the plug out it disables most of the wires and makes the car much safer to work around if you're in, a, in an urgent situation. This repair I'm going to do today doesn't require doing this because we're not going to be anywhere near the orange wires. Now, one of the key advantages of the hybrid system is that uh, it converts the momentum energy back into chemical energy in the battery when you brake. And what that means is it's a little bit more complex than a normal braking system in the sense that even when the engine's off, you want those brakes to work. And so they've got a system whereby if the key fob is close to the vehicle, the brake system will be activated and the brake system will be pressurized, even if the vehicle's off. And so I'm going to go and take these keys and I'm going to put them uh, well away from the vehicle so that that system is turned off. The other interesting thing about these hybrids is the accessory battery, which is really small and underpowered. And interestingly enough, although the big battery in the back could um, conceivably boost the small one, they don't allow that to happen because the small one's responsible for a lot of the safety relays. And so if this little battery goes, you're going to have to get it replaced before the vehicle will start, even though you've got lots of juice in the back seat. Honestly, I'm not sure I need to do this, but uh, just in the interest of safety so the vehicle doesn't wake up and have a knip shit as to what I'm doing on the brakes. I'm going to undo the negative pull of the accessory battery. It means I need to reinitialize the doors and windows and the sunroof after, but that, that's pretty easy to do. So before uh, putting the car up on the jack stands, I'm going to use my breaker bar and just loosen off these lug bolts so they're easier to get off. Here we are under the front of the vehicle and I'm going to jack it up and Lexus, make, Lexus makes it easier by offering a central jack point. So I'm going to jack it up and chuck um, both wheels, put the emergency brake on and I'm going to put jack stands underneath both to give myself some room. This is a 21 millimeter wrench and I've got my safety glasses on. Don't forget that uh, there's a security lug nut here. You need to use the security screws for those ones. So first thing you do is have a look around. The struts are fine and there's no leakage there. And similarly the CV boots on both the inner and the outer look fine with no leakage or tearing of the boots. There's no leakage around the um, brake bleeder nipple and more importantly I'm looking at the status of the rotor and not unexpectedly given that this is a hybrid and there are not that many miles on it. Um, this rotor looks pristine this is a one to two inch micrometer. I'll have to convert it to metric after. It's not perfect for this job, but I think it'll be close enough. Now, as I said, I haven't had any pulsations in the brakes, but um, I just put this dial micrometer on here just to get a sense as to the run out. And it uh, looks like we're well within specs here. Two thousandths, I think. Let's check the other side. And here we are on the other side and similarly things look pristine. No problem on either side of the rotor. And the rotor uh, wear is smooth and well within acceptable limits. So I'm going to keep these rotors and I'm just going to swap out the brake pads. Okay, I've done those, I've done those two 14 millimeter bolts. And now um, I've put the uh, caliper up there where it's not uh, resting on the tube. And I'll direct your attention to the brake pads. And you can see there's quite a bit more wear on the inner pad than on the outline pad, which is a little concerning. And so I've taken the um, slider out. This is the lower slider. Taking that out, we're going to lube that up and put it back in again. Let's take the uh, outer slider out. 
This just comes off like this. I don't believe this vehicle's ever had a service, so this would be factory. Now for lubing the sliders, I normally use silicone grease in most vehicles, but Toyota want you to do this, use this lithium grease. That's the part number. Um, it's, it's quite expensive, about $24 for um, this tube, and that's how much you put on the sliders. You don't put it in the holes, just on the sliders. And make sure you get these sliders back in right. The one without the plastic bushing is on the top. This slides in there. You don't have to overdo it with the fluid and just make sure the plastic, uh, the rubber grommet gets over that shoulder. That moves quite nicely. And here's the one with the plastic bushing. You can see it's different. So these are um, my replacement brake pads. I got them from Napa and if you notice there's an inner and an outer pad. They're made of something different, I guess, to try and make them work better. They came with their own backing plate, and um, it is tempting to use their backing plate, but if I look at the two backing plates, the old one extends out here a little bit on both sides. It's a bit rusty, but it seems to be okay. And the new one seems to come off pretty easily. I think I'm going to swap over and use the old backing plates on these brakes. And then the metal clips, and I've um, cleaned these up with the wire brush. I'll slip them back on, they're just a press fit. And then we'll put some anti-seize on the critical areas here to try and prevent for rust from forming. And here's the top clip, I took that out, cleaned it off with a wire brush, put a little dab of anti-seize on the rubbing areas, and let's put it back together again. I've been using this disc brake quiet. I'm going to put it on between the pad and the metal plate to try and prevent it from chattering, and I'm going to put it on now to um, allow it to set up a little bit because uh, I want it to be a little bit firm when the backing plate comes on. Don't need a whole lot of it. And of course remember you don't put it on the pad side. And this is the top inner pad um, of the right side, and we've got to swing over this warning clip it's interesting this um, was so worn on this side and yet the warning clip wasn't singing for me. Um, looks like I got it just in time. Anyway, we'll swap that over with some needle nose pliers. Okay, so there it is there. This is the top inner pad um, and it clips on right there. There's a little um, saddle where you can get it in. Of course, these pads are made to go on either side and so you've got to decide which side you're on. Make sure you get it on the right side. And remember how this thing works. As the pad wears down, it's supposed to make a singing noise as it scratches past that piece of metal. Okay, so I put a few dabs of this nickel anti-seize on here. I don't know whether it makes a difference, copper or nickel, but it's most important that you not get it on the rotors, so don't mess it all over the place. And it looks like I've got lots of room. As this level rises when I compress in the, the calipers, um, I need to make sure I have enough room conventionally you loosen this off a little bit. Now some guys feel that they should crack the bleeder screw and allow the dirty liquid to drain out rather than refluxing back up the tube. I'm not going to do that in this situation because of the specific issue with the braking system. The computer will sense that the uh, caliper is open and will send off a code and I can't clear that code without the tech software. So I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to leave the system intact. This is compressing easily as I expected it to. Um, while you're here, have a look and make sure you're not leaking any brake fluid here because if you're leaking brake fluid, you may end up needing to um, fix the caliper. And then I'll just direct your attention to this edge of the slider here. It's, it's oblong shaped and this is the direction it goes in with the flat spot on this side and this side. And then same thing down here, a flat spot dovetails nicely with the system. The torque spec here is 25 foot-pounds, so not all that 
not all that tight. So I timed this to coincide with putting the winter tires on. And a lot of tires, it doesn't make a difference as to which direction the tires rotate in, but you've got to put them on in that direction. And so these particular tires can either can only be rotated front to back, not left to right. I like to drive the vehicle a little bit and then button down the wheels. These get torqued to 75 foot-pounds. Okay, we've got the system all back together again, and of course I remembered to um, put the cap back on the master cylinder. At this point, normally what you'd do is you'd um, pump up the brakes, but remember this is a brake-by-wire system, meaning that that should happen automatically when you bring the key fob into proximity of the engine. And so let's take this for a test drive. So just drifting downhill, you can see that the regenerative braking system is working. I'm putting the brakes on now, and it happens even when you have the brakes off when you're drifting downhill. And my braking is normal, it's not pulling to one side or the other, and overall things are going well. So I'm going to call this a fix. Say so if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.